What up, everyone? So, we've got the unboxing and review of the BAM box. This one's been out for a little while. I told you guys I waited on some of the boxes so the values would be more accurate and things like that. But um, they're starting to pile up now, so I'm going to hold off on the collectible reviews for just a little bit and try to get through some of the boxes before they become too much old news. I know I'm usually the last one to review boxes anyway, but I don't want to be too horribly late, so I want to try and get it at the right time where the values are still accurate, but it's not just really old stuff. Um, but yeah, the band box has been talking about this box for a while. This is their anniversary crate. So they've mentioned a lot of things that are going to be in here, so I know a few of them already. But let's take a look for ourselves. So first, one we knew that was going to be in here. Uh, the signed Jason Mask by Ari uh, Lehman. Lemon? Lehman? Something like that. Um, so we have gotten this one before, but I know that when we did get this, a lot of people missed out on it because it was a long time ago, and it was before the BAM box was, it was as popular as it is. So I know a lot of people were disappointed that they missed out on it, so I think that's why they put it back in. Uh, me, myself, I already have one, but I do like this one better, though. The one I got was, like, gold, and I like the more traditional look, and I like that they kind of put the blood on there, too. It makes it look a lot better. Um... But Bambox does have to be a little bit careful putting repeat items. Not that it's disappointing, it's still a really cool item, but they're going to devalue their own items. So they got to be careful not putting the same stuff, because now the people that had that to begin with, it's now worth a little less because there's a couple thousand of them more out there. So it's still a really cool item, and I don't think Ari's signature was super valuable to begin with, because he was just the character actor in the, uh, behind the mask, and I don't think he's super well known other than the few like horror things he's done. So I don't think it'll make too much of a difference, but it's just something they do have to be aware of when they're put putting repeat stuff in there because it will devalue them. And that's the same problem that Loot Crate has. They put out so many of each product, they're automatically devalued. But we'll see. We'll do some research and see what the value is. But yeah, I like this mask a lot better. Um, for some reason, they didn't do the classic mask the first time. They did a black one and then they did a gold variant, which I got. But yeah, they should have just kept it traditional with this style. So I, I definitely like this one better. And I framed mine up really nice. And I'll do, I'm will do i going to do a video on how to frame that up really cool too. Because it's a little bit hard to display. Because you can't like put a tack straight through it. So I'll show you how I did mine. Um, and maybe I'll put a picture of it in this video. If not, I'll do a separate video of how to do that. But it's still a really cool item. Very iconic character. And it's always cool to get signed stuff. And as far as I know, everyone got one. I can't confirm that. But I'm pretty sure everyone did. And there's a little certificate of authenticity right there, making it official. That's good. All right. Then we got a pin. And it looks like I got Stranger Things. So as always, they usually have a few different pins. Focus. They usually have a few different pin selections. So mine's from Stranger... Focus. From Stranger Things. And I'm sure they had a few other options in there. They always do really nice on their pins. So I'm, I'm actually going to get some pins made too for my channel. I'm still figuring it out. But I want to get some done just in the same style. This is really cool. I really like that. And I've actually recently uh, invested in a cork board to start saving my pins. So I'm actually liking pins a lot more now. Because I used to just kind of toss them out. But now I have on the little board. So that makes it really nice. Alrighty. So this is, uh, this is not a repeat item. But it's similar. So this... Um, is a license plate, and I'm sure uh, we before we got the Back to the Future one, which I showed you, I made into a magnet and put on my fridge. Um, I want to say this seems like it's from Ferris Bueller. I think I don't quite remember. I'm just saying from like the Illinois and the land of the Lincoln. I think that's what it is, but I could totally be wrong on that. I'm not completely sure. I'll have to check the little description pamphlet in there and see where it's from. But I think that's what it is. I. It's obviously I don't remember every license plate that's ever been in a movie. I don't remember if it said this or if that's just like a play on words for, I think. So I'll have to double check on that. But either way, they still do a good job because it's actually, it's not just printed on metal. It's actually embossed and you can see the texture in there. So it's actually stamped metal, which I like. And the same with the Back to the Future one. Because there are similar ones out there, uh, like the Back to the Future, that were much different quality. They were just a flat piece of metal with something printed on there, which is fine, nothing wrong with that. But the fact that they actually take time to imprint on there makes it look like a real license plate. Like this looks like a legit license plate. If I didn't know any better, you'd probably put that on there and fool some people. I wouldn't recommend it, but you could. So I like that they take the extra detail, and that makes theirs worth more than the other replicas out there. So that's good. Good job on that. And here, 
looks like we got some artwork. And if I'm not mistaken, yep, Chris Uminga. So this is, uh, again, I'm not sure if everyone got this or not. I'll have to check the card. But there's usually the option of like two art prints. Either way, I'm glad that I got Chris Uminga because this is who I knew was going to be in the box. And this is who I was hoping to get. I'm actually a big, big fan of his. I have a ton of his original art. I have things that he's done specifically for me. Uh, the one they did before, the um, Joker one, is one of the few prints that I've kept from a box. And it's signed, and it's numbered, which is really cool. He's a really great artist. He's by far been my favorite artist that's appeared in this box. So I'm glad he's made another appearance. And it looks like this is um, Walking Dead, Negan. So I like that. It's a cool print. He's a really fantastic artist. So I'm glad I got him. I'm not sure who the other artist was. Don't care. I'm glad I got Chris Ruominga. That's great. All right. Next. All right. So similar. So not a repeat item, but a repeat idea. If I'm not mistaken, this is an original film cell. Let's see what it says. Certificate of Authenticity, original hand-painted production animation. Yep. So this is an original cell, and I'm guessing it's a reproduction background. One of a kind of thing, original piece, that was... There's also two, like, the world. Uh, yeah, I can only assume that the background is a reproduction. That's usually the case, because back then they used to do one background for, like, a whole scene. So there'd only be one original background and a ton of different cells. And usually people sell them together, but the background's usually just a production copy, which I'm fine with. I don't need an original background. But let's take it out and we'll get a better look. Gotta be real careful. Oh, shit. Yeah, there you go. So yeah, an actual original production cell. So this I thought was really amazing. And before we got, um, we didn't get cells. We got the, um, they all co go by different names. In Japan, they're called genjas, I think. But it was just the, um, the hand drawing. It was the pencil sketch of the pre-production cell. So that's what it was. And now, and as far as I can assume, everyone got one. An actual cell. And the cool thing is I actually got Slimer in my last one too. So those will look really nice framed up together. The drawing of Slimer and the actual production cell of Slimer. So total coincidence. I'm sure there were many that I could have got. So that's really cool. And this is so awesome. And cells, most of the time, they really don't go for that much. Not as much as you'd think. I've gotten a lot of them. And it always depends on the show. Um, if it was really popular a show, then obviously it's going to be more expensive. If it wasn't that popular, so on and so forth. And then it depends on what's in there. This one's small, so it's probably not super expensive. But it's still the fact that it doesn't really matter. This is an original piece of artwork that's been produced, that's on TV, that's been printed in there, forever immortalized in time. So it's cool that you can actually find the episode, see this scene, and say, look, I have that specific thing right there, and you can look at it. That's what always, like gets me like really excited for when things are printed somewhere and you own that. It's always cool to get original artwork, but it's cool to see it like out there in the open and know you own that. So you actually have like a little piece of history because they're like it says in the back, there's no two like it. This is the only one in the world and it's of a TV show that they can redo a million times, but most of them don't do production cells anymore. Most of them do the computer generated um, cartoon style. So this is kind of a, a dying thing that eventually will be gone for good. So I think this is really cool. I think that was a fantastic idea for them to put that back in there. And the fact that everyone can get one is really cool. I think that's an amazing thing. So yeah, it looks like all the items in the box. So these were, this was their anniversary box. So it was all, not repeat items, but repeat ideas like the license plate. We got a different one. Artists we've seen before that were very popular, production stuff, signatures. So it's all the most popular things of the past year put into one box for anyone that missed it. So it's a really cool idea, and I'm glad they did it because I liked everything in here. So, yep, I'm pretty sure that was everything. So we'll take a short little break. I'll do some research, and then we'll talk about some value on these items, and then give this box a rating. See you soon. All right, we are back. Let's talk about some value on these items. So first, the mask. The signed Jason mask by Ari Lehman. Lemon, whatever. So, um, like I was saying before, exactly what I thought. Putting it back in the box has devalued it pretty significantly, actually. It's probably half the price it originally was. This is going for somewhere around 20 to 25 And that's for obvious reasons, because so many people got it now. Um, if there's anyone that doesn't want it, they're having to sell it for a competitive price, then it lowers it. First time we got it, it was like 40 to $45 because there really wasn't that much stuff out there that was signed by him. There was only a few things here and there. 
now that it's back, there's a whole lot more of them, so it has devalued quite a bit. Still a really cool item, and I also found out that the paint job on this is all custom. Not that it's like a super cool paint job, but it's just cool that they took the time to make them all different. So it's all different blood spatters, so they're all um, original in that sense. So that's cool. It's just a nice added touch to make it different from the original mask. But like I said, gets devalued 20 to 25. It's still good. It holds decent value. It's just not as much as the original one. And again, obvious reasons. Next, our art print. So you would have either gotten this one by Chris Uminga or another one by Rocky Davies, which we saw in a previous box as well. And again, I'm very happy I got the Chris Uminga one. Um, not that the other one's bad or anything, but I would have been really bummed out if I missed out on Chris's stuff because he's just a really great artist and I really like his stuff. So I'm definitely going to frame that up real nice. Um, but this is where it always gets tricky when they put different items in there. It's hard to give it a specific value because these are totally different people. Some artists are more popular than others. It's just the way it is. So the um, Rocky Davies one's going for only about 13 bucks, which is pretty surprising actually. It's cool artwork and it's got a limited run and it's signed. So I was pretty surprised it's that low. Then our Chris Omega one, again, very surprised. Only going for like $15 to $16. So again, I'm glad I waited on this box because now the values are much more accurate than they would have been firsthand because it probably would have been double all of these prices. But um, yeah, now that they're more accurate, but still I'm very surprised. Um, I'm a big fan of Chris Omega, but you know, he's not that well known. It's not like he's a household name or anything. You've, I'm sure everyone's seen his artwork somewhere but probably didn't know it was him. So I don't think people realize what a big deal he is because that's really dirt cheap. And you know it's not like this is like the most amazing print ever but it's still hand signed and numbered. That's pretty amazing. Usually when you buy prints from him they're not always signed and they're not a limited run either. So I'm pretty surprised because the first one went for a lot more than that too. So I'm guessing I'm just going to attribute this to popularity of the BAM box. The more popular they get, the less their items are worth. And that's the bitter irony of any box company. The more successful you get, the lower the resale value is. Which it doesn't really matter to the company because they still get paid, but it matters to us. And that's the same thing that's happened with Loot Crate. It used to always be the best box with the most value, but since so many people get it, Everything in there is really, really, really low resale value. So it kind of seems like the same thing is happening with Bambox. It's fine if we still get like double the value, but just something to note, just on a side note. So those are the prices. So the range is going to be 13 to 16. But yeah, I was very surprised that they're going for such a low amount because I really thought it was awesome. I think it's really cool, but it is what it is. It's not up to me. Alrighty. <clears throat> then, our license plate. So I was right. This was from Ferris Bueller, and this is actually what the plate says in the movie. I actually Googled it and looked it up. I never noticed that, but who would have, honestly? Watching that movie, you're going to remember every license plate you see. It's actually what this says. It's only on the back, though. It's not on the front of the car. It's only on the back, and it's only in one scene in the movie for like a quick second. So it's not in there much, but yeah, I... I don't know if anyone else would recognize that though. I don't know if the license plate was well known enough. Not like the Back to the Future one. That one's pretty obvious. But they also have the Knight Rider one and one from um, uh, Ron Burgundy, uh, Angerman. So they also had those. Those were options too. Knight Rider would have been cool. That would have been recognizable. But I like Ferris Bueller as a movie better, but I'm just not sure how recognizable it would be. But either way, um, the quality is still very nice on these. And luckily, all the license plate ran about the same amount. Didn't really matter which one you got because, you know, as far as popularity, they're, they're all pretty recognizable. Ferris Bueller, Knight Rider, and Anchorman, like, they may be a little more popular than the other, but all very recognizable. So they were all going for about that $10 to $12 value. So lower than you'd expect, but still holding a decent amount because there is really good quality to it. Next, the production cell. So everyone was fortunate enough to get one of these. Um, I looked it up, and there were a lot of Slimer ones that were out there, which I'm fine with. I thought he was a cool character. And um, there was ones from Sonic and ones from Street Fighter. That I thought that was cool because that was a very short-lived show. And I saw the Street Fighter ones actually came with the production sketch as well. So that I was kind of pissed about that because I would have liked that because I always like to frame them next to each other. But you can find them online right now pretty cheap, which is cool. And honestly, they're all going for right around $20. Uh, almost every listing I looked at was right around that $20 range. And usually production sales are all over the place because it depends. Like, is there one character? Is there two characters? Is it a face? Is it a full body? Is it an action shop? There's usually so much to take into consideration. But when I looked them up, almost everywhere, they're right around that $20 range, which is weird. I can't believe they're all exactly the same, but you know, whatever. And production sales usually go for a little more than that, 
But same situation, there's so many of them out there. It's not that hard to get them. It's just still, it's more cool than it is valuable. Because like I said, this is a piece of history. This is a something that's never going to be recreated or reproduced. Like someone actually hand-painted that. They're hand-painted cells, which is really cool. So that will get a $20 value. And the last one, where's the little thing, is our pin. Where'd I put it? Where's the booklet? Damn it. I swear to God, I have things in my hand like one second. Oh, here it is. So the pin, we got different options, no surprise. And the one I got was Stranger Things. And we also got these zombie brass knuckles or ones that said BAM box. I would have liked the brass knuckle ones because I actually have them sitting right here just by total circumstance. The brass knuckles we got a long time ago that are still illegal in California, but whatever. Um, I would have liked the brass knuckle ones. So if anyone wants to trade... Let me know. But yeah, this one's from Stranger Things. Um, I haven't checked out the show yet. That's why I'm not super excited for it. I know it's a great show. You don't have to tell me about it. I'm sure it's great. Just haven't got around to it. Anyway, um, all the pins got around the same amount. Because um, these, the BAM box ones, were a limited run. So I'm not valuing it based on that. Based on the other two, they each went for like 6 to $7, which is pretty standard. They're always around 6 to 7 and on the high end like 10 bucks. So that's pretty standard for pins. No surprise there. So that was all the items in the box. So that being said, our value on the low end was 69 and on the high end was 80. So even on that low end, even with these remarkably low values, like I was really surprised what some of these items were being not only listed and sold for. So even with those low values, it's still, you got double your value. And on the high end, way more than that. It, again, with these very low values. And in here, we got one-of-a-kind artwork. We got signatures on paints and masks that are also technically one-of-a-kind. We got prop replicas in there that are pretty iconic. We got a nice pin, and then we got artwork that's also signed and numbered. So it's not technically original artwork, but each print is technically one-of-a-kind because there's only one of that numbered edition. So everything in here was pretty epic and pretty one-of-a-kind here. So I'm easily giving this box an 8 out of 10, probably higher than that. I want to hear what you guys think first before I give it a final value. And I'm sure um, you guys will have positive things to say too. So most likely it will get higher than an 8 out of 10 because this is, this is pretty great. If you get double your value on the low end, and honestly, anything in here, you'd have no problem reselling if you didn't like it. Why you wouldn't, I don't know. But you'd have really no problem selling artwork that's signed, signed iconic people and original production cells like that. It's really great stuff. So there's literally nothing in here that I didn't like. I, I thought everything in here was quite fantastic. And I fucking told you guys, everyone that they had that one bad month and everyone canceled. And I'm like, yeah, it's like, chill out. It'll come back. Don't worry. I promise they will. They always do. And they did. I told you. You guys should listen to me more. Anyway, so let me know what you guys thought about it. And we'll talk about a final score. But hit all the marks. It got originality, variety, value, um, there's, yeah, hit everything pretty much perfectly. So I think it's definitely going to get higher than 8 out of 10, but it's not up to me. It's up to you guys. Let me know what you thought. Let's talk about it in the comments. And until then, we'll see you in the next box review. This has been the Bam Box, 8 out of 10, maybe higher. And I'll see you in the next one. Thank you all for watching. Love you all. Peace.